Welcome to part two. Since that crane kill demonstration was so underwhelming, I want to see what happens when we actually crank this up to 100. So let's go in here and mix that up to 100. Go back into the blue LUT and um, let's enable the grain kill. There we go. Now it doesn't get rid of it entirely, but it kills it enough to where it's not going to affect the image. And you can actually see when I back out of the blue LUT just how nice that is. Nice and smooth. And then once we add our uh, our Cinegamma and our Dense Night look, we get a really, really uh, look at that. Nice. Looks a lot like film. You know, we can still see detail here in their faces, um, but then the background is about the background is nice and smooth and velvety. And uh, of course, you saw this in the uh, in the opening video, so you saw for yourself how well that looks. But uh, that's how it's done. Um, this is just using the solo buttons. Uh, but uh, in a second, I'll actually go in and show you how to build um, your color gear mixer and uh, mix your gears together to produce uh, the kind of footage that you want. But uh, now that we've covered the basics, uh, let's get into the toolkit. So here it is over here. Uh, when you install the system, it shows up here in animation presets. There it is, Color Gear Toolkit. And here's all your folders. Uh, yours won't have an ads folder, that's just mine. That's because I'm still developing um, some new gears. Um, and this folder should actually be down here where, the, where, where my custom Cheyenne folder is. Um, so just ignore that. But uh, when you install it, it'll show up here in the effects and presets panel. And um, let's take a quick look at what we have here. In the uh, DSLR fix it uh, box or folder here, we've got uh, presets for if you're going to convert with 5D to RGB. Um, if you're going to convert with Final Cut Pro, uh, there's a whole battery. Of, uh, of fix its and then um, universal fixes if you're if you're bringing in raw 5d footage um, and there's there's a 5d flat and then there's Cinegamma and green kill only which are uh, these uh, Cinegamma settings broken down into their respective uh, components which is a green kill that you can turn up or down uh, mix however you want and then the Cinegamma which again you can you can mix to taste and you can build your own gears uh, out of these individual modules here um, let's get, uh, get the gears. Um, we have uh, four categories. We have they need to be organized better, don't they? Uh, we got uh, we have blue. Um, we got uh, noir, which is for black and white. Produces some really great black and white stuff. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then uh, warm, which is uh, your warmer gears. And then uh, special. And these are going to be some of your interesting looks. Like uh, there's a night vision and infrared. Um, some light leaks, uh, Nick Max, which is a yellow. Um, you saw that in the in the demo, and then uh, Tony Scott. Uh, I'll cover that quite a bit in the tutorials because it's a it's a fun little gear to use. Um, slight touch of blue green, yellow wash, dense green, dense night, which is the one that I used on here. Um, it's the one I I tend to use it on night footage because it it does give you a really great uh, dense sort of texture to everything. And then. Um, we have some mild gears. This is still developing. Um, I'm going to put a lot of those so, sort of subtle, like uh, lavender or violet filters, um, maybe in here. Just stuff that's just stuff that you just drag and drop, and you know you don't really have to build anything out of it. You just want to very quickly add, you know, a tint of color or a hint of color uh, here and there. You can do that. Um, and adjustments. Um, this is going to be. You can. Do, this is one of your main toolkit items right here. Uh, for density, uh, really quick, you know, sucking the blue and green and red um, out of a out of a shot, something that's really intense. Like if if this were like really overly saturated when I was done uh, color correcting, I could drag a minus red on there, and that would really tone that down. Oh, you get your toners, your shadow lifts. Uh, in here, you got an exposure correction. You can you can drop the exposure by one or two stops, um, and then the money bag. This uh, this folder right here has got the punches, and this has got your your film grain, your grain killer, grain killer two, and then spectral enhancer, which you'll see uh, here in a little bit, which is my my favorite gear. Um, I think just the spectral enhancer and the grain killer alone uh, are worth the price of admission because those are going to blow you away. But uh, so that's the toolkit, 
And um, I'll warn you that this is this will probably be radically different, um, a radically different approach to color correction than most of you are used to. Uh, but once you get the hang of it, um, you'll find that the possibilities are just virtually endless. So let's get over to the demo. Um, so this is a shot that's in the uh, in the sort of demo reel, and uh, you'll see down here that uh, I've I've brought this in um, using uh, 5D to RGB at 1.8, um, and I found that the 1.8 and the no gamma there wasn't a lot of difference uh, coming off the MTS file. Um, just but just for these purposes, since I know a lot of you have brought yours in at 1.8 gamma, um, I figured I would use this as the demo. So if we go to our raw footage, uh, you can take a look at what that looks like, and let's go in and I'll show you how to use the snapshot button so you can compare um, before and after. Um, you just take a snapshot by clicking that, it takes a snapshot of this frame, which you can recall by hitting this button here. So if I turn this off, and let's let that render out the image. And then you want to see the raw, you just click the shell snapshot and you can very quickly bounce back and forth. That's our raw MTS file. That is our color corrected image. So you can see quite a difference there. And um, just walk you through this, we have a grain kill set at 46%. We have a Cinegamma um, set at 100%, a uh, spectral enhancer at 46, and then a density correction. So if I were to show you those over here, those would be uh, a Cinegamma. Um, it's probably Cinegamma base. Um, I'm guessing, I can't remember what exact, exact setting I actually used, um, which is why it's very important that um, if you want to try and recreate something, you need to label these correctly. So uh, I'm going to guess it's probably, uh, considering how green the footage was, it's probably one of the green kills like super green or extra green. Um, uh, spectral Enhancer, uh, which is here in the punches, uh, Density, which is in the adjustments, and um, the Green Kill, which is also in the punches. So those are the gears that we're going to use. Um, let's go ahead and see what they do just from what's here. Uh, let's turn the Density off. And that's going to get that. There you go. See, that's less contrast, less dense. Um, turn off the Spectral Enhancer. Um, uh, turn off the, uh, the Cinegamma and turn off the Green Kill, which, uh, oh, it's just very subtle. Okay, and you'll notice this right here. This is a, uh, this is actually a power window that I created. Um, if we were to solo that, you'd see that, uh, it's just covering the middle part of her face and I'll, well, we'll go over that. Well, actually, let's go ahead and take this and all of these and actually I actually just want to copy this mask so I can make sure that I duplicate it exactly. Um, go in, hit MM for mask, go to mask one, and copy it. And just to make sure that we have it, let's delete it, and then paste it by hitting Command V. Yes, okay, we have a copy of that mask. Okay, um, I'm going to delete that layer. I'm going to delete all of these layers. And now we have just our raw footage. And that matches the snapshot that we took earlier. Okay, so to create adjustment layers, um, the easiest way to do it is to hold down Option and Command and hit Y. I'm going to do that four times because I know I had four layers there. Uh, and um, I always uh, label so that you can keep track. And I know that this one's going to be a grain killer. I know that this one's going to be my Cinegamma. Uh, what, what do we say? Extra green, maybe? Let's call it extra. And we'll figure out if that's right. Not in a second. And then our spectral enhancer. And last was density, I believe. Um, and uh, I only know that because I, I do this all the time. And as you get used to this system, you'll, you'll get used to what it is that you do. Um, you'll watch my tutorials, you'll get used to what it is that I do. Um, and you'll come up with your own techniques in your own order. But uh, normally when you're building this, you would start with, you would actually wouldn't start with a grain killer. Uh, let's make that purple. I always, I color code these because it's easier to keep straight. For me, grain killer is always purple. Any of the, the, the uh, 
DSLR fixets are usually green. Um, also, the adjustments are usually green, the dark green. Uh, spectral for me is always yellow. Um, and density is dark green. Okay, so usually you start with the Cinegamma. This is will usually drag and drop fix a lot of your footage. A lot of the problems that people have with their footage, one of these drag and drops, boom, and you're done. Okay, so let's see. What did we say? Cinegamma extra, extra green? Let's try that one. Okay, now you can drop it here, but there's no guarantee it's actually going to go onto that. Usually, if that's highlighted and this is green, it's the one it's going to go to, but you can just drag it onto the adjustment layer. Boom. And that right there. Skin tones are a little more natural. You can see before, after. Um, but that didn't go quite where we wanted. We wanted it to be a little more dense. So I'm going to go to the density layer next. Um, and I always put the spectral enhancer right above the Cinegamma. Uh, You'll, I'll go over it more in the tutorial series as to why I do that, but uh, let's just add a density to the base. is starting to we're starting to lose it, the shadows here. So I know I'm going to have to do a power window, but let's hold off for a second. I'm going to turn off the spectral enhancer, and I'm really quickly just going to drag and drop green killer to the green killer level, uh, spectral enhancer one to the spectral enhancer layer, uh, or la layer, just to get that out of the way. So you can see that's how that's how quickly that can be done. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting Command D. Um, turn off the audio because I'm not going to need that anytime. And then that mask that I had, I'm going to uh, hit Command V, paste that on there. Now what I do, as I showed you this earlier with layers, you can go in, color correction, levels. And I already know because I've done this a million times that usually I want to go with a negative 0.08 on the input black and that is going to boom right there so if we were to deselect that layer so you can see this more clearly this fixes a dark spot on her face and then let's uh, this is really my favorite to do here. So uh, here's the other thing. Let's, let's turn this into a mixer by selecting all the adjustment layers and hitting the T button, which will bring up the opacity. And let's see, the density is a little, a little much. Um, let's bring it down to about 70. 70%. Um, the spectral enhancer, the spectral enhancer is really, really strong. Um, in fact, let me turn it on and you'll see that it will just cream this footage. I mean, it's just going to just be blaring. See that we got it's really, really bright and saturated. Um, spectral enhancer, usually on DSLR footage, around 50% or less. Some footage is different, um, but I'm going to go about 46, I think. Yeah, let's see it without. There's without. There's with. It's a nice pop. Um, you know, I, I've gotten comments from a lot of people about how the colors in uh, with Color Gear really just seem to just almost burn through the image and just pop out, and and uh, um, that's all from the Spectral Enhancer. And then the Grain Killer, and the Grain Killer, um, I think I talked about this earlier, kind of sometimes works as a silk stocking. And if you don't know what that is, I'll go to it through it in the tutorial series because sometimes I use it to kill grain, sometimes I use it to uh, sort of as a silk stocking filter um, on faces to sort of soften up uh, fine lines um, and blemishes, etc. So let's see, uh, Grain Killer's at 100%, which is really going to, well, you'll get a sense for it. It's really going to blur um, her skin tone. Yeah, look at that. It's almost like it's been completely airbrushed. Man, that's a little much. So um, let's, you can you can click here and type a value. I'm thinking green kill is probably going to be about 46%, probably the same as, as the spectral enhancer. And that should give us just a nice, subtle uh, sort of smoothing on the face. And then if we uh, go back to our shell snapshot, there's our original. That's corrected.
and you are done. And I don't know how long that took, but it wasn't very long. Um, so that's the basics of how the system works. Now, it's it's not going to be the same on every piece of footage. In fact, let's go to uh, one that I'm, I'm sure you guys were waiting to see. And here's what I want to do. Um, since we can very quickly get to the raw just by clicking uh, this, um, the solo button, let's uh, so I can show you just how close we get. Let me take a snapshot and uh, let's go solo so we can see. Boom. Okay, that's our footage. So let's go here. And let's delete. Uh, oh, one of the ways that you might want to think about um, uh, the way the system works, I mean, to, to better understand the, the signal flow, is to think of it like this. The, uh, your footage rests you know, down here, um, and it connects to the gear directly above it. So first one it connects to, and, and this particular setup is, is uh, the Cinegamma, which is usually the, the first one you'll use. Um, and then uh, it's processed here and then it connects into the next gear and it's processed uh, by that particular gear and so on and so on all the way up the chain until it, the last bit of processing happens on the top level and it's dumped out here into the viewer and it, right now um, we're soloed so it is going directly into the viewer and if I were to solo another layer like say the Cinegamma layer uh, you can see the effect that has on the footage so and this is the warm one, so you can see it, it warms the image up a little bit. It's starting to see, I, I can't remember what exactly the gas component is on these lights. It's like a mercury halide or a mercury, mercury halogen. Um, I'm not sure, there's a lot of these in Hollywood. But uh, the really great thing about them is when you, when you start really getting into them and start really pushing them, you can really see the green in them. And it really comes, it really comes out here in Andrew's footage. You can see it uh, here. Uh, in the shadows here, where, wherever one of those lights is, and this one, of course, uh, these ones back here, which are similar to these, and just casting these reflections here on the ground. Just interesting lighting notes. Okay, and if we were to uh, bypass that, let's say let's go up here to the Tony Scott and uh, turn that gear on, that's what the Tony Scott filter is doing. It's very subtle, um, but I, I don't need it to do much. I just wanted it to remap um, the uh, the hues um, or the, the the color tones a little bit, and then of course the Micmax, which is a, a very yellowy filter, um, which, which I guess was off in this particular instance. Um, so I can't turn it. I think I wasn't using it, or maybe I was just doing it as a sort of an added uh, tone for uh, for the image. But that's not the snapshot that we took. The snapshot we took didn't have Micmax in it. And this has a lot of yellow already, so I don't think we need it. So let's go ahead and, and uh, grab the end of this and drag it out of here, because we're not going to use it for this footage. Um, so our top layer will be, um, just to be sure, let's turn off the solo. We move it. Let's go back to four. You can see that our snapshot matches our output. OK, so let's go into here and let's delete these gears. And there's our raw footage. Let's check. Yes, that is raw footage. No effects applied. And you can see that this is, you can download this footage. Um, uh, the link is on the website, the Color Gear website. Um, this, uh, uh, this numbered MP4 is the MP4 downloaded directly from Andrew's um, Vimeo page. So you can try these color corrections yourself, and you can try, um, once you've got the plugin, dragging and dropping and, and recreating what we're doing right here. Okay, so uh, you can see the Micmax, the Spectral Enhancer, and the Gamma Base are still there for uh, these layers, which if I were to just tab through, if you hit the numbers, the corresponding numbers at the t on your number pad, it'll jump to that part of the timeline. So you can see uh, just some of the other ones I was spot checking. There's that one. I was doing a little bit different uh, version of that uh, by going in. You'll see I went in and selected this footage and did some levels adjustments to it. Uh, to do something a little different than what I did um, for the one that's online. Uh, same thing for two and one. Uh, looks like I wasn't done with two. And then this one. Um, and in this one I was just trying to bring back some of the detail that was getting lost in here. But uh, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, the Tony Scott's missing too. That's 
that's probably causing some of our problems right there. Okay, so let's go back to four. Um, this is our after, that's what we're trying to get to. And let's get started. Okay, probably gonna wanna start with Cinegamma. So uh, let's do this really quick. Let's create, uh, mm, let's just create, for now, let's create two adjustment layers. Um, let's bring them down on top of our footage. Um, and we'll call this one Cinegamma. And let's just do a Cinegamma correction. I think it was, uh, Hmm. Was it original? Well, let's just pick one. Set again. Let's go base warm. Ooh, that right there is not too far away from what we had. You see, for a lot of people, this would be all you would need. Boom! That was a drag and drop. Boom! You're done. Um, I I want to give it a little bit more pop. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to um, actually I'm going to skip this one because this one's going to be my spectral enhancer, but I'll label it just for now. I always like adding that one last because you want to because that's really going to make your image pop and you uh, you'll see why later, but uh, I'd like to sort of add that at the end. Okay, so we've got that. Um, Let's look at our image here. What do we need? Um, oh yeah, that's right. I want to tone remap the. So I'm going to need a Tony Scott layer. So let's go Command Option Y. Bring that down here. Name you Tony Scott. I'm sure, Tony's loving all the free publicity he's getting from me mentioning his name over and over again. Uh, where is Tony Scott? Tony Scott is in Gears. Special. There you are, Tony. Drag and drop Tony. Boom. Yeah. This is uh, turning everything quite green. We might want to limit that a little bit. In fact, um, let's see. Let's, let's turn these on their mixers. Um, let's drop Tony to about 50. Yeah, that's good right there, about 54. Um, uh, I'll leave the spectral at 100 for now. Um, Cinegamma. Hmm. Let's play with it a little bit. Hmm. Now I'm going to leave it at 100. And then. Um, what are we missing? I don't know, that looks pretty good. Let's pop on the spectral and see what happens. Wait, did I add? Oh, I didn't add the spectral. Okay, that's why. Okay, let's close the gears. Spectral and answer one. There you go. I didn't color code these. Uh, yellow for spectral answer. Tony Scott is <sighs> now let's go peach. Adjustments are usually always dark green. Okay, so now Okay, I'm liking that. It doesn't have any doesn't pop. These don't pop. Look at these colors here. They're not they're not speaking to me. So let's pop on the spectral enhancer and boom. Wow. That needs something needs to be brought down. Um yeah, it needs some density. Let's uh let's do this. Let's put a density adjustment right here. are usually always dark green for me. 
Okay, adjustments. Density. Drag and drop. Boom. And let's see, how far is that off? Wow, that's pretty damn close. Let's see, what's what's going on here? Why is why is ours so much brighter than than the other one? Okay. Let's see. Density is it? Hmm. Let's back the density off a little bit. There you go. Our original is a little dimmer. Our new one is really bright, really pops. And there you go. So not too difficult. Um, again, uh, I'm I'm really experienced at this, so it's it's uh, pretty quick for me. I mean, if you're having trouble following along, don't worry. The tutorials I'll go through step by step. My my thought process about what makes me decide to drag, you know, one gear versus another. Um, and a lot of it is just looking at the image. That's when you hear me thinking. Um, I'm just looking at the image and deciding uh, what it needs, and um, that's kind of where the kind of where the name comes from. Uh, comes from is that you know when you when you talk to uh, photographers and cinematographers and and uh, and other colorists, they'll um, you'll hear you'll hear a phrase a lot where they just talk about when they when they look at something that uh, that the frame or the 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 picture just sort of speaks to them. Um, and it's all about uh, kind of about, about listening. Um, and if you look in the in the Cinegear name, there is uh, the word here. So you have to sort of learn to listen to to what the what the image is telling you. And then that's also why we have the uh, the proverbial proverbial uh, mixer board here to uh, sort of mix the effects. And the way this works, those of you who are coming from a node based type system. Um, uh, you know, you're used to taking your footage and plugging it into a node, and then branching it off and plugging it into other nodes, um, and uh, and being able to to separate parts of the image out and, and that sort of thing. And this we can do that with this. I'll show you um, uh, with this this little setup over here how we do that. Um, and doing a you know obviously on the DaVinci you've got much more control over the secondaries. We can do secondaries here as well. Um, you need to have a licensed version of After Effects with a working version of Color Finesse to do it, um, but it'll work. I know people complain that they that they don't like it as much as the DaVinci, and I have to agree. But it is serviceable, and it will allow you to do what it is that you you want to do in in those terms. But you know, I'm 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 in, I'm actually like this new version better than the original. I don't know about you guys. The the old one's a little a little dim. It's got like it's like maybe the density's not set right. Or something. Uh, hmm. It's bugging me that I can't figure out why it's doing that. Oh well. Uh, who cares? The new one's better, right? Okay, moving on. Um, let's look at. Uh, well, I think I think that pretty much shows you. That well, let's let's do another one. Okay. This one has kind of become oh, what's the image on my on the, on the the main page of the website? But it's kind of become sort of a almost a signature. And you can see I really played around with this. I I tried low contrast and low contrast flat. Um, these are these are different Cinegamma settings. I call it Cinegamma just because it's it's a cinematic gamma sort of correction. Um, got the green killer on there, uh, a little bit of minus red um, to take out some of the. Uh, uh, well, when you start <laughs> when you start messing with this, sometimes you you can bring out tones in people's skin that that uh, that you didn't know was there, and maybe you don't don't really want to see, uh, and you want to back those off. So let's let's go to let's take a snapshot of this oh, really quick just to show you that this is still working. Okay, snapshot, boom. Okay, and let's look at the raw image. And there we go. 
And this was shot in available light. Um, you can see right here, there's a little point of light. Um, I'm actually using a, uh, a little LED uh, camera light. It's a little, like a 50 bank of LEDs that uh, sits in the hot shoe of the, of the camera um, to give a little bit of highlight and fill this in a little bit. But for the most part, this is all available light, no bounces. Um, all this light on her, the key light here is coming, you can see in the reflection just from the sky and the fact that uh, we're in, a, in the shadow of this big hill back here um, and then everything outside of that shadow is actually shining light back in this way and you can see the sunlight streaming through the trees and hitting back here in a couple of places and uh, nice lush green foliage but uh, just not as, uh, as dynamic as that this to me looks more like something you'd see like in a magazine spread or something like that and this looks very flat um, and I wish I uh, I almost wish I'd had the camera hacked for this because um, I've seen um, the kind of detail you get with with the hacked camera and a little bit more of uh, just dynamic range anyway so uh, just to walk you through here's the grain killer uh, is a Cinegamma baseline, which is right here, just a Cinegamma base. Uh, let's go ahead and actually let's do this. Let's change Cinegamma base to one of the low contrasts. So let's get rid of that and everything will go kind of green. And then uh, there's a low contrast flat. You can see that has a little bit different effect. See, a little less green but a little less brightness, a little less intensity um, and luminance and then just go low contrast you can see the low contrast actually gives us more contrast than the low contrast flat and again less green in the image and as a result a darker image um, and that's one of the things that I wanted to avoid which is why I created all the different um, Cinegamas B cameras is that uh, you have uh, a four two zero or four two two or four 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 and you notice that the four always remains consistent and that's because the green channel uh, is always tied to the luminance channel so you have four luminous bits and your green is contained in there and then either two red and two blue or two red and no blue um, or uh, two red and one blue or or uh, uh, four red and four blue for four 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 um, and the biggest challenge that we had uh, before this plugin was that whenever you would try to reduce the green in the image you would reduce the, um, the luminance as well and so what I've tried to do is I've tried to create gears that will allow you to still kill the green um, but re retain enough uh, luminance information within that particular gear um, before it gets processed in the you know like if it's in this gear which you know this one uh, retains enough luminance to when it gets processed by the, all the other gears you still get a really bright crisp image coming up out of the top and um, I'll talk more about that with the uh, uh, with the um, tutorial series and I'll even show you uh, how they were made I'll actually go into the gears and show you how the gears were put together um, so that you can tweak them yourself um, create your own save your presets and uh, I think the last one well actually let's go and just take a look at some of the other ones that I've done here is uh, You can tell this is kind of a micmacs. I mean, I don't know if you if you're a fan of uh, what is it, uh, Jean-Pierre Genet's, uh, the guy that did Delicatessen and micmacs and and uh, Alien Resurrection. He's a big fan of this like yellow cast sort of thing. And um, let's if we were to deconstruct it, let's turn off the micmacs and the micmacs booster. And this is basically just our corrected image with the skin tones a little more skin tony. There's obviously this fuzz or haze right here is actually coming from a power window this power window right here um, on her face which is which is tracked by the way if we go in and and uh, see there we go and the reason this is so slow is because I have the camera recording which is eating up you can see I have almost no memory left um, and uh, so if, but if we want to go faster if we, drop this down to a quarter resolution as far as the preview goes we should be able to step through this pretty quickly you can see it moving along with her 
as she was walking up. Okay, so that's our, our power window on our footage. Let's go back to one by hitting the one key on the numbers. Boom. And then uh, uh, we've got the, uh, so we have the Cinegamma base. Boom. We have the uh, Micmax, which is a slight yellow green. And then the booster. This gives us a nice, nice boost in the, in, in the yellow range. Um, let's get uh, our, um, add the green killer, which is set pretty low. Um, if we set that up high, that's really going to, yes, it's kind of blurring the image, so we don't really want that. And we don't have a lot of grain in this image, so we're, we're pretty okay. It's just trying to soften up some of the fine lines. But yeah, so there's that look. Um, machine is just crawling because I have like no memory. I'm actually going to pause here for a second. I'm going to hit the caps lock key so that this doesn't re-render. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to purge all. That's going to, you'll see this is my memory made. It's a little free plugin, a little free program you can get through the uh, app store which shows you how much memory you have free in your system. Okay, and then uh, let's go to this one. And this is the uh, this is the original footage. And uh, let's turn on the Cinegamma. It's sort of green, gives us a little bit better curve. And then I'm just going to add Dense Warm, which is one of our our gears in a special folder over here. It's uh, Dense Warm right there, which is going to give us a very kind of dirty, almost uh, dark sepia. But they can see the color tones are still still shining through kind of thing and and this is kind of a fun shot because it's uh let me turn that off you can see um there's a black kind of a black lacquer door behind her head which is cracked open and that's sending this light in and then i've got a little flow box you know filling here so you know not a sort of a high contrast look but you can do a lot of different things with like you can take this is the infrared um all this is all different gears that i've laid in here and you can kind of audition um let's see what that looks like um, yeah, so there's infrared, you know, almost like a like an infrared filter on the camera. Um, we can go with like a, a crushed look. There we go. From uh, actually, let's let's go here so we can audition. We can go AB. Let's take a snapshot. There we go. And then you can kind of bounce back and forth before after um, let's go dense green there it's kind of a these are almost like magic bullet kind of looks kind of thing um, and any any, any any of these that you like there or any stuff like this any sort of drag and drop you know look filters because there's other there's other systems out there there's was a film magic pro and film wash um, in which uh, it's really, it's not designed to be able to, to be, um, I don't know, sustainable. You can't, it can't evolve. Uh, the great thing about color gears is it's designed to evolve. It doesn't, it doesn't require that I keep updating it because uh, it, it will just kind of grow on its own. You guys will, will make your own changes. Um, you'll share those with each other. Um, you'll find new ways to do things. Um, I'll find new ways to do things. I'm, I'm constantly, you know, uh, evolving. I just, I just came up with a two-strip color look uh, probably about an hour ago um, that in fact it's right over here let's go um, so here's the original footage and then I did like a two strip almost like a in the avi the early part of the aviator they went back to that old technicolor two strip uh, look and um, uh, wanted to sort of duplicate the way those those early color movies when they only had you know like a blue and a red stripe of you know blue and red uh, emulsion layers in the film um, uh, you had that uh, almost everything green would look blue so you can see how this this has got that sort of aviator 
type look, and I've added some film grain. Uh, I killed I've killed the grain that was there, and then added a really fine, almost like a Kodak uh, Vision uh, uh, 320 um, film grain to the image. But uh, yeah, really really cool, you know. So I'm constantly coming up with stuff, and you guys will. But let's go back to this. Let's audition. Let's get rid of the dense green. Let's go. Um, let's see. We had dense warm, bluer than blue. This is, you know, you can use that day for night if you like. Um, uh, we got Tony Scott heavy. You know, which is that sort of, you know, you've seen that in countless, you know, movies there and there. And then, um, I don't know why this one's even still in here. It, uh, it, um didn't work. I didn't like it. But uh, yeah, so you can see how you can go in and audition different looks. And you can even combine them. Um, let's see, let's go, let's turn on Tony Scott. Heavy, and then a uh, little bit of, um, let's go dense green, and then let's hit T and bring dense green you know, you've you've got the ring. You know, you combine a couple of gears and and mix them accordingly, and got yourself a horror movie without uh, no fuss, no muss. So, a couple other things. Um, you know, this this footage you've seen in my reel. Uh, this is the raw, and then uh, adding a you know, grain killer, some super green, and simply warmer, and then this becomes that you see all this green in the skin in the skin tones. Here will just get wiped out, and uh, nice, nice and smooth. Um, let's get uh, kitchen sink. You guys have seen this. This is very, it's a shot in sunlight. Uh, it's very high contrast. We just want to kind of warm it up a little bit. Brand killer. We've got uh, oh, I call it low coat. It's low contrast flat, which is one of our DSLR fixers and simply warm. It's just some kind of flat uninteresting footage to uh, something with a little bit more pop boom nice really nice um, this one here obviously this will be the first tutorial uh, and uh, this is one of my favorite shots this is uh, I tried to combine um, when we shot this let's take a look at the raw actually let's take a snapshot real quick and then let's look at the raw so this is extremely flat. Um, you can see very low contrast. Uh, this was a, a shot for. Um, uh, well, actually, I can't talk about it. This was a. Actually, this was a shot um, that we had to do very, very quickly. It's one light, and then it's my little LED camera light uh, being held off to the side, actually by the the makeup girl. Um, but I, what I really wanted to do here, I just didn't have time to do, is I really wanted to set up some gobos and some flags and actually create like a shadow you know it's like a maybe like a leafy shadow or like just a, a dark kind of shadow here and then a little bit there and then uh, um, use a uh, like a tilt shift lens um, and the the friend of mine that was supposed to be bringing the tilt shift lens got stuck in traffic and didn't make it there in time to shoot this shot so I wanted to uh, create that look in post so uh, I, I did and uh, now you can see that you know it's out of focus here it's out of focus here uh, we have that shadow the way I wanted it you know we've darkened it up you know her skin tones got a little bit you know richness to it a little bit of texture a little bit of grain a little bit of grit um, versus uh, versus what we were forced to, to shoot and color gear will give you that kind of flexibility um, I will teach you how to use it I'll teach you how to to in some cases work absolute miracles to be able to save something like this would have been completely unusable compared with everything else that we had that was really high contrast and intense and dark and this just didn't fit and this is what we were forced to to sort of put together and then uh, do this to it in post and um, uh, Rock Road Picks sent me this um, this is a v was a real this was shot on a hack GH2 um, at I want to say a hundred megabits per second um, and you can see it's got a really fine grain to it uh, but it's really problematic in the fact that there's some very greenish indoor lighting going on here um, and then uh, the sunlight streaming through the window which is which is blowing this out and uh, you can see here I've got you know the base the, the 
low contrast, uh, grain killer, flat, uh, steel dirt, steel blue, spectral enhanced gradient, uh, uh, the crushed and grain, of course, which I'm not using, the steel blue I'm not using, and uh, was able to, to basically bring this back under control, uh, just like that. There we go. Nice, rich skin tone. Um, uh, the grain is, is nice and flat. It's been, been chilled out a little bit by the grain killer. And uh, it's a really nice looking picture. His eyes are still there. They didn't disappear. Um, let's go in and actually uh, let's take a snapshot of that. And then let's go. So this is what he sent me. And he was really worried that it was kind of blown out. I just wanted to see, because there was such a high dynamic of, of, of these blown out highlights out here, and uh, and just this sort of puke green here, uh, and uh, just wanted to see what color gear could do, and you know, it's uh, one, two, three, four layers, and let's take a look at those real quick um, to see how they're uh, mixed together. Let's hit T for transparency, and see 50% of that, 41% of that, 57 of that, 100 of that, and you get that. It's that easy. Um, this was a, a correction of, um, let's take a snapshot, of uh, this is the, I guess, the infamous trees of death that has been killing certain patches. And this is the, the raw footage here. Um, you can sort of scrub through and you can see that it's, uh, it's a little steady cam shot going through the trees. And uh, it's got that famous GH2 green to it. And let's go back to one. And uh, there it is, corrected. Boom. And this one's becoming my favorite. This is one of there's there's five of these, six of these I think I'm working on right now. And uh, these are going to be ultra combinable uh, because they affect the shadows and the mids and the highlights all differently. So you know we've got there's a red, there's a uh, there's a violet, um, there's uh, like a steel blue I think. No, that's just regular blue, and then like a steel blue, um, and a, a cyan. And um, you can do some interesting things. Like you can take the red, which is, looks really nice, and you combine it with the violet, and uh, let's check that out. And then uh, maybe grab the violet, back it off a little bit, so you can retain. A little bit of the detail, and look at that. That's pretty. Looks like, you know, compared to the raw, which is that. Pretty cool, huh? And um, the 5D. Where is my 5D stuff? Oh, dang it. Okay, let's go 5D noir. And um, this was, um, you can see that's been uh, tracked and, and rotoed out. But this was, uh, uh, this was shot in the 5D. I shot this uh, when the 5D first came out. Um, it was still 30p, not 24. Um, and you couldn't, you couldn't manually set anything. I mean, the, the, the ISO would just go wherever it went. So we had to use like a chip chart and like expose on that um, to be able to get exposures. But one of the things that we wanted to do is we, we shot it in color. I'll show you. Um, let's take a snapshot. And you can see the raw footage uh, here. The 5D owners will recognize this is a, a raw 5D movie file. Uh, this has been converted to 444 uh, using 5D to RGB. And uh, let's take a look at that. So here's what we shot. You had this little green and yellow uh, gel corners on the, on the shaft. Uh, red lighting, red gels on the on the lamp in the background, and then this light in his hair is coming from a uh, a nail on plate, and a little 300 stuck up here in the corner. But we knew we wanted to go really dark, almost like Sin City dark, and you know give ourselves the options of maybe isolating and bringing out one or two or or uh, uh, more of the colors with the black and white, which looks like well there's the the heavy black and white. This is with the uh, the the Noir Ultra. Which is up in here in our, our, uh, there we go, noir, medium, and ultra, and then uh, uh, the tracked door, which gives us this really cool, you know, we have it uh, just bounce through real quick. 
can kind of see how that's just really really stands out gives you some really cool interesting little look and this is all this is all done with the 5d I know some of you are thinking come on man really black and white seriously it's the oldest trick in the book man when you can't get the color to look right you just go black and white so you know, I know, I, you're right you got me you got me or or did you here's our our image in black and white in film noir and there we go here's our same image in uh, in color with the 5D and you look down here you see your 5D footage or your raw 5D footage um, and for this instance I did convert that same file to 444 in 5D to RGB but it's turned off so uh, let's take a snapshot of our color graded uh, 5D footage with our color gear and let's take a look at the raw so here's the raw 5D footage um, one of the things I noticed with 5D, a lot of 5D 70 owners will will uh, have complained about this to me, that when they go to color grade their images, especially in the skin tone areas, when you've got this kind of lighting, this little bit all over the place, you've got white, you've got you know, you've got obviously we've got yellow, green, and, and red, um, and then this fall off in the shadows. When you try to do a really deep, dramatic look like this, that uh, that these areas begin to really fall apart. You begin to pick up a lot of grain and compression smearing, um, and that's what the grain killer's for. So you can see uh, when the look is applied that uh, this all holds its shape really, really well. None of that grain, none of that uh, compression smearing, um, it gets killed by the grain killer and allows you to do you know, some vibrant, dramatic uh, color correction. And that's what this whole system is designed for. It's designed for, it doesn't matter if it's the 5D, 7D, GH2, GH1, T2i, D700, you know, whatever DSLR you're using, Color Gear is optimized to give you just vibrant, eye-popping images, and uh, and it's not confined to just DSLRs. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at some red footage. Uh, here we go. Here's the R3D file loaded in, um, and right now it's soloed. So let's uh, let's take a snapshot so we can get back to that. And then uh, here's our our color gear gears applied in layers above, and let's uh, see what they do to the image. And you see it renders really fast. This is at 4K. I mean we're we're zoomed all the way out. Um, and uh, look at that nice texture, um, nice grit and grain and skin tones. Um, and the thing that you can do with this, you can't do with say Red Cine X or, or, or some of the other, um, you know, quick red programs. Is you can't do the power windows the way you can with After Effects. You know, we could track this image. You know, we could uh, we could we could bring this uh, lamp up so it's brighter, bring it down, isolate uh, this area here where it's all magenta, and uh, do some color correction, get it to match um, the lighting over here on this side. You know, darken this side of the image up instead of this, and cut it off. Draw shapes. A lot of that, you know, sort of isolated secondary color correction. You know, we can do here that you can't do in, in Red Sun X. Uh, and I think I've showed you uh, here. This is a uh, the, the two strip color. Um, let's go ahead and take a snapshot, and then uh, check out the. Uh, this is the before. Uh, this is the raw GH2 footage uh, unhacked, and then uh, uh, oh, I did not just do that. Okay, and then here's the uh, here's the two strip, and this is uh, sort of reminiscent of the Aviator. Uh, early on in the film, they used that old Technicolor two strip blue and red uh, uh, film process to sort of get that aged, old uh, color look, which I which I really kind of enjoyed. Um, and this is sort of a reproduction. There's a gear for this now called two strip um, that will be included in the release version. Uh, we've also uh, went and created this sort of classic Kodak. Uh, film look, and this is um, if you remember, you know, late '60s through the '70s, pretty much. Uh, Kodak uh, films had this sort of uh, character to them that was not too far removed from that old two strip, and so this is uh, based on the two strip, and it allows us to get a full color, old-fashioned sort of vintage film look, but not going back to like you know, the '20s type vintage film, but you know, vintage for some of us, which is you know '60s, '70s, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then the final new feature that you guys are going to love is the mixer. So like if we go back to, let's go back to the two strip, you can see I've got, you know, all the gears here and you've got their opacities and this can get kind of messy after a while, especially if you're, if you're cutting up your adjustment layers and, and such. So I've designed the mixer so that instead of having to uh, untwirl or open up or uncollapse your layers, you can uh, uh, add a mixer to one of the adjustment layers, just drop it down here, and then tie the opacities 
for all of your gears to sliders and name them appropriately. So let's uh, let's take a snapshot. This is the raw GH2 footage. Um, here it is, solo. Let's unsolo it. And you can see very quickly it's going to affect the image. And boom, we can preview it. This is, you know, we've gone from something that uh, was rather flat to something that this could be a horror movie, you know, whatever you want the look to be. And this is just something I threw together. This isn't uh, any particular uh, gear or look or, or setting. Um, I just threw these on here to, to mess around with. But you can see I've got a power window. Let's start here at the bottom. A power window around this bright area right here. Um, and uh, you can see the mask right there. And that's basically just there to sort of reduce the uh, the brightness of this of this area. And right now I've got the, the power window set to diminish and we can crank it up and it goes all the way down. But of course, um, I don't know if you're seeing this. I, I did notice on some of the tests that I did that uh, rather than the clean, really crisp images that I have in here right now, uh, a lot of the stuff looks really blocky and kind of compression smeary because of the, uh, the quick time um, compression of this. But right now these whites aren't white anymore. They're almost kind of a grayish. So I've actually gone too far with, uh, with bringing the levels down so I can bring it back up to where they're white, like right there. Um, without it, it, you can see they're, they're super blown out. These colors pop a little bit more. We can pop up the spectral enhancer. Um, or maybe that's too much. Maybe that's a little too vibrant. You can back it off a little bit. Maybe you want something you know, with a little less tone to it. Um, as you can see here, um, the toner. The toner is uh, not allowing me to select it because it's locked right now. I was using the toner and then I, um, I decided better of it and I decided to add a steel dirt uh, gear and uh, use that instead and I didn't want to mess with the wiring the way that the mixer is wired so instead I just uh, uh, turned off and locked the toner level so if I even grab the toner slider and move it nothing happens. So this can keep you from uh, screwing up your look and, and getting lost in, in your adjustments. And then of course you get the steel dirt, steel dirt, uh, which is the main component of our look here. If we get rid of that, you can see everything goes really, really bright, a little too bright. Um, yeah, the steel dirt is just what it implies. It's kind of a, a steel dirt sort of, almost like taking the footage and just walking all over it uh, in the processing room. And then, uh, and then this just warms up the image. You can see it's kind of bluish. Uh, naturally, if we go back to the, the original or snapshot, you can see this has kind of got a blue cast to it. And here at the end, we just warmed it up. We warm it up a little bit, uh, or we can warm it up a lot. And you just do that with sliders. And that way, this is a, a, a module in and to itself, and um, you don't have to worry about uh, clutter down here in the timeline. So that's the mixer. And that's, that's color gear. Um, dramatic, vibrant, film-like images with incredible flexibility. And the toolkit will be released January 1st. It will retail for $50, but uh, upon its release until February 15th, it'll be on sale for $25. Bucks. So, uh, and you can get it right here. This is the, uh, this is the website, colorgear.com. Um, you can see, uh, you can check out some of the videos I posted, which is a, a sort of teaser of what uh, the toolkit can do. Um, and then this color correction on Andrew Reed's uh, from uh, Blade Runner footage to his Tokyo footage. Uh, the store isn't live yet, but it, when, it, when it is, it'll look like this. There's the price for now, $25. Um, you will get it, and with it, you get a free lifetime premium membership um, and access to all the tutorials, links, and future updates. All that is free. And um, so, you know, as the system is improved and updated, um, those updates will be downloadable from Color Gear. Dot com and those updates will always be free. Um, and unlike other systems where early adopters are punished for rushing, rushing to embrace something, uh, everyone that purchases Color Gear in the first six months uh, will be rewarded with a lifetime exemption from any monthly or annual subscriptions and will receive amazing discounts on future products. And also here on the site, uh, you'll see uh, right now you can't access the tutorials because, uh, uh, not well, I'm not signed in as a member. Um, and uh, uh, also here there's some helpful links you can see you've got uh, a link to DNX HD if you don't already have it and you want the codec you can just go there and download it uh, the personal view the GH2 hack 5D to RGB very helpful tool get that and then my Vimeo channel um, so check out the website and um, this is where all of my uh, tutorials teaching you how to use color gear how to grade the way that I grade how to get those fantastic images that you've seen so until next time uh, happy grading